Welcome back. Now that we've covered all the different lessons on factoring, I just wanted to show you a flow chart that will help you keep all the different techniques organized and it will help show you when to use all the different techniques. So the very first thing at the top of this flow chart is going to be GCF. Remember, no matter what type of problem you're doing, you always check for a GCF first. No matter if it's a binomial, trinomial, or something else, you always check for a GCF first. If there's a GCF, you take it out. If there isn't one, you just keep moving along. But once you check and remove if there is one, the GCF, then ask yourself, are you dealing with a binomial, which means two terms, or are you dealing with a trinomial, which means three terms? If you're dealing with a binomial, we've looked at two different types. We looked at one type, where you dealt with perfect squares. And we looked at another type where you dealt with perfect cubes. If it's perfect squares, then it must be subtraction. Remember, if it's addition, you can't factor it. But if it's subtraction, then you're going to have the two parentheses, which are both going to be binomials, and one's going to automatically be plus, and one's going to be minus. So you first take out a GCF if there is one. If it's a binomial, perfect squares and subtraction, you're going to do the two parentheses, one with plus, one with minus. If it's addition, you can't factor it. If it's perfect cubes, Perfect cubes, you can factor it if it's plus or minus. It doesn't matter in the sense of being able to factor it, but it does matter in terms of the signs and the answer. And this is where you have to use SOAP. Remember, that stands for same, opposite, and always positive. So once you take out a GCF, if there is one, and it's a binomial and perfect cubes, you're going to think SOAP to get your signs, and then you're going to have a smaller parenthesis, which will be a binomial, and you will have a larger parenthesis, which will be a trinomial. Anything else that's a binomial, we haven't covered. So we only have to worry about squares and cubes when it comes to being a binomial. Now, if it's not a binomial, in our case, it will most likely be a trinomial. So we looked at different techniques for factoring trinomials. First of all, we looked at the coefficient in front of x squared, which I'm going to call a. If a is simply equal to 1, so it's x squared by itself, then in this case, all you have to do is the sum and product game. Once you get the sum and product game, those key numbers will be the numbers you put in parentheses. So, for example, if you got 4 and 3, it will simply be x plus 3 and x plus 4. If the coefficient in front of x squared is bigger than 1, or if you're dealing with two variables with x and y, or you're dealing with powers greater than x squared, so like x to the fourth, in that situation, you do start off with the sum and product right away. But instead of that giving you the answers right away, like when a is 1, that's when you have to use those key numbers to split the middle. And then once you split the middle, you make your groups and take the GCF three times. So with trinomials, you look for a GCF first. Take it out if there is one. If the number in front of x squared is just one, do the sum and product. If it's bigger than one or you're dealing with special things like two variables, take do the sum and product. Split the middle with those key numbers and make your groups. What happens if the sum and product doesn't work? If the sum and product doesn't work, then you can't factor it any further. Whatever that trinomial is, that is the factor. You're done already. The sum and product not working can happen. In our cases, it will be pretty rare, but it is a possibility. So remember, GCF first. Determine if it's a binomial or a trinomial. 
If it's a binomial, determine if you're dealing with squares and cubes. If you have squares and plus, you can't factor it. If it's minus, you automatically do parentheses with plus and minus. If you have a binomial with cubes, you can factor it whether or not it's plus or minus. Think soap to get the sign, same, opposite, always positive. And you're going to have one small parenthesis that's a binomial and a larger one that's a trinomial. If it's not a binomial, chances are it's going to be a trinomial. So once you take out the GCF, if there is one, and it's a trinomial, if in front of x squared is just a 1, you're going to use the sum and product and be done. If it's greater than 1, you have to use the sum and product, split the middle, and form your groups. If the sum and product doesn't work in either case, where a is 1 or a is bigger than 1, then you can't factor it any further and you're done. And that's pretty much will show you all the different techniques and all the different situations that you'll have when factoring. So this is a nice little flowchart to help you keep those techniques organized.